Hey everybody, welcome back. Today in Simple Trader, we are going to be improving the way that we manage accounts in our application. So specifically what I want to do is I want to use the account of the current logged in user whenever we go to buy a stock. So before what we were doing, we just wanted to test this out. And to do that, I was just hard coding this account in here. But what I really want to do is get the account of the user that is logged in and actually commit the transaction to their account. So before I get into what I'm going to do, I'm going to show off where our current application stands right now and why we're going to have to make the changes that we are about to make. So if we look at our iAuthenticator, as you can see, this is what we use to log in a user. And let's actually look at the real implementation. So the user logs in and it sets this current account property up here. But as you can see, this is a private setter, so we're not going to be able to set this from outside the class. And that is a problem if we wanted to use this authenticator in this buy stock command to get the account and then set it. Because this buy stock method, it's going to return an account with the new balance and the new transaction on the account. So we're going to have to take that account and set it as the current account for the application but we can't do that because the setter is private and you might be thinking no big deal just make the setter public but I don't want to do that because I don't think other objects that use this authenticator should be able to set this they should have to set the current account by logging in so we are not going to make this a public setter so what we need is a different class to manage our account state so we can call getters and setters on the account so let's go ahead and add a new folder here and let's call this accounts and this is going to be we're going to start off with an interface and this is going to be the i account store because it's going to store the current account of the application so all it's going to have is an account and we'll call this current account and it'll be a getter and a setter because we need to set this property let's go ahead and import account from our domain and let's actually implement this. So just a regular class, we will call this account store. In fact, I probably don't even need to interface this. It's kind of unnecessary to make this interface because all this is gonna have is that one single property. This is one of those cases where you just ain't gonna need it, but I already made it, so I might as well just stick with it. So this is gonna be the current account. We'll make this class public and it'll implement I account store. So let's go ahead and import from our domain and there we go so now we have our account store and this is now going to hold the current account of our application but we have a problem here and that is that we have a current account here and we have a current account here so we have current account in two places that is not the way that we want to manage state in our application what we really want is a single source of truth the current account should be in one spot so how are we going to do this well what we're going to do is only use the account store to hold the account and then our authenticator is going to use the account store to get the current account so let's take a look at how this is going to work what we're going to have to do is let's just throw a constructor right here and this authenticator is going to take the i account store we'll call this account store and we can generate a field for that Let's clean this up a little bit. And now that we have our account store, we can use this to get our current account. So let's get rid of this field right here because we don't need it. We are gonna use our account store to manage the account state. So we can get the current account from our account store and use that as the data for our current account on this authenticator. And then we can also set that current account on the account store whenever we log in and change this account. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and register that with our dependency injection container. So where is our state? Where do we manage that? I want to keep this all together down here. So services.add. I feel like this should be a singleton because this is our single source of truth. In fact, I really think all of these should be singletons, not scoped. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And this is going to be an I account store. And the implementation is just going to be the account store. Again, the interface, probably a little bit overkill. Probably don't need it. 
but we already made it, so I'm just going to keep it. All right, so now we have that implemented, and now we have a way to get and set an account for the current application. So now, in our buy stock command, what we can do is use our i account store, get that in here, and let's create a field for that. Put a little underscore before that. And I should really make all these read only while I'm here. I don't know why I didn't do that automatically. And then let's get rid of this this before that because we don't need it. All right, so now we have our account store. We can get the account of the application. So let's get rid of this fake account. And let's use our account store and get the current account. So there we go. We are going to buy a stock for the current account. And this is the information for the stock that we're going to buy. So the symbol and the shares that we want to buy. And this method is going to return the new account for the application. So let's use our account store and we're going to set the new current account to the account that we get back from the buy stock method. And that's going to be the account that has the updated balance and the updated transactions on it. And that's actually all we need to do in this command. So as you can see, it's a pretty clean command. I really like moving my commands into their own classes, not using relay command or anything like that. And if you do it right, you should be able to make these pretty slim. So I'm liking where this is standing right now. And I think we're actually done with this buy stock command. So let's get out of that. And what else do we need to do? I think where we instantiate this buy stock command, we need to give it an I account story. And we can show that if we go and build this we should get a build error. There we go. No argument for the I account store right here. And that's on our buy view model. This buy view model gets resolved from our dependency injection container, I believe. So if we just put our I account store right here and we can pass that in, we should get it automatically and it should be the instance that we register with our container. So all should be good. And that's all we need to do. Let's X out of that. And let's actually test this out. So we are going to be buying a stock. And while I'm doing this, we actually got an exception. So what is this? This is on our authenticator. Let's go to that. I must have done something stupid. Oh, look at that. I, built a, I put a constructor right here. And we already have one. So that's not good. Let's move that into the same constructor. I did not see this constructor. I'm an idiot. Okay. Let's move that field up there too. There we go. Get rid of that other constructor. And let's actually get that database up. Let me look at this table. We are going to take a look at the asset transactions table. So let's view data on that. As you can see, no transactions. Let's boot up the application and buy a stock. All right, so let's go to our buy view model. I think this actually needs some UI work because there's really nothing on here that says like what to do. You just get popped up with this text box and this search button. But we can improve that in the future. Let's go ahead and type in the symbol that we want to buy. So T for AT&T. And we're going to buy three shares. So let's do that. And of course, we don't have any pop-ups that say, like, you successfully bought the stock. So we should probably change that eventually, too. But let's refresh this table. And there we go. We get our asset transaction in here. So we did buy T. And this was the price. And we also got the shares in there, the date process, and it was a purchase. That is all looking great. We are finally using our account in the application. Now, another thing I want to do, and let's actually go into our main view model. And let me clear out all this. And let's actually bring up our main window as well. So I have a little bit of a problem here that I don't like, and that is that we are digging into these objects to get these properties that we're binding to. So if we look at our main view model, we expose the entire navigator, the entire authenticator, just to get these properties. But really, we shouldn't be exposing these. We should just get the properties that we need. So what I want to do is first off, go into our navigator. And I'm done making this an observable object. I really don't think that I should be binding to these state objects. I feel like I should only be binding to the view model. And if we do that, 
it's going to be more consistent, it's going to make the application more clean because we know all of our bindings are solely in the view model. So we're done with that stuff. Let's go ahead and get rid of this own property changed. And let's go into our authenticator, get rid of observable object, get rid of these own property changed. And I think that is all we need to do. So now back in our main view model, what I'm going to do is actually make these private. So our I navigator is going to be a private field. And then our I authenticator is going to be private as well. And we can get rid of these properties right here. And then we need to set these fields correctly. So our navigator, our authenticator. And now what we're going to do is create calculated properties that grab the value from these objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a property here is it's going to be boolean is logged in and it's just going to use the authenticator and get the is logged in property and then we're going to do the same thing for our view model base our current view model and this is going to use our navigator and get the current view model so by doing this we don't have to expose all of this information in this class. It's just better encapsulation, better object-oriented programming. So now in our main window, we are no longer going to dig into these objects because we have the properties just straight up on the main view model. We can just bind to them, and there we go. So let's run this, and we'll see why this isn't going to work. Actually, I'm not even going to run it. So the reason it's not going to work is because we're no longer raising on property change when these properties on our state objects change. So what we're going to have to do is actually raise events on our authenticator and on our navigator. And then when we raise those events, our main view model can listen for those events and update on property change for is logged in and current view model. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. So on our I navigator, we can just have an event and it can just be an action. So you pretty much just subscribe to this event with a method that takes no parameters and returns a void. And we're just going to call this state change. And I'm going to copy this event and put it in the authenticator as well. So state changed. And while I still have it copied, I might as well just drop it right here as well. Or where do I like where do I usually like to put my events? I think I like to put them underneath properties but before method. So this is going to be a public event, state changed, and we need to raise this event. So when the current account changes, we are going to raise state changed, and we can do that with invoke. And I put this nice little question mark here, and the reason we do that is so that if state changed has no subscribers, no one has subscribed to this event, it won't throw a null exception when we try to invoke it, it'll just do nothing essentially. So now that we have that, let's go into our iNavigator or just our regular navigator and do the same thing. Get that event in here, make it public. And in the setter, we can raise the state changed event in the same way. There we go. And now if we go into our main view model, what we're gonna do is subscribe to those events on our navigator and our authenticator. So navigator, when the state changes, what do we need to do? So we're going to have this navigator state changed. So when the navigator state changes, what we need to do is let our view know that the current view model property has changed. So we can do that. Just specify the property name. And what this is going to do is raise that one property changed and the view is going to re-grab this property and it's going to have the updated current view model value on our navigator. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the authenticator. So state changed and authenticator state changed. What are we going to do now? We need to tell the view to get the new value of the is logged in property. Again, on property changed name of and the name of the property that changed is is logged in. So that is much better in my opinion. We're not exposing all of this information. We are solely binding to our view model. And I think that's a great 
practice to use in WPF. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure everything works. All right, so we log in. And there we go, it still redirects us, so all is good. Our view is still reactive to these properties. So if you guys want to take a look at this a little bit deeper, basically this is kind of like a mediator. So if we look at our login view model, or go into our login command, it is going to log in a user, and then on our authenticator, it sets the current account of the user that logged in, and it raises state changed, and then anyone subscribed to the state changed event can access this information. And it's kind of like our view models are communicating. So our login view model kind of basically sent a message to our main view model that the current account changed, and it can grab that information that it needs to update the view. So that's pretty cool. That's the way that you want to do communication between view models. You don't need anything like super complicated. You just need this third party mediator class. And one thing you might notice is that we didn't implement a state changed on our i account store. And we might down the road, but right now we don't need it, so we didn't implement it. So we'll see how that goes down the road. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. We implemented our account store. We're managing accounts a little bit better in our application. And we also updated our state objects so we don't bind to them. We don't expose all that information where we don't need to. Better encapsulation. And I also showed off how you can pretty much communicate between your view models. So if, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.